Lisa Genova, remember, the science of memory and the art of forgetting. Embark on a fascinating exploration of the human mind with Remember, the science of memory and the art of forgetting, by Lisa Genova. In this summary, you will gain insights into the complex and captivating process of memory formation and the different types, semantic, episodic, and muscle memory. Discover the truth behind the accuracy of our memories and the reasons for memory deterioration as we age. Learn about the importance of forgetting and the various strategies for optimizing memory in our daily lives. Understanding Memory Formation Our brain encodes and consolidates information into long-term memory through a process that involves the prefrontal cortex and hippocampus. There are three main types of memory, semantic, episodic, and muscle memory. Semantic memory forms through repeated actions while episodic memory records impactful moments tied to a specific time and place. Have you ever wondered how your brain forms memories? In this book summary, we explore the fascinating process of memory formation. To become a memory, any information you perceive needs to reach the hippocampus, the part of the brain responsible for knitting neural activity into long-term memory. Encoding is the first step in this process. When you're fully attentive, your brain translates raw data from the senses into neural activity within the prefrontal cortex. From there, the information passes into the hippocampus, where neural activity is bound into a stable pattern, becoming your memory of the moment. There are three main types of memory functions, semantic, episodic, and muscle memory. For semantic memory to form, repeated actions or studied repetition are necessary. On the other hand, episodic memories happen in response to impactful and surprising moments tied to a specific time and place. To solidify your memory of something like a US penny, it is crucial to study it repeatedly and pay attention to its details. By doing this, the neural representation will eventually travel to the hippocampus of the brain, becoming your long-term memory of the penny, ready to be accessed at any time. In conclusion, the brain forms memories through encoding and consolidation, with the hippocampus playing a crucial role. Understanding the different memory types is essential in grasping how our memory works. The inaccuracies of memory the memory of any event can shift and alter over time, often without us even realizing it. This is due to the way our brains process sensory information and consolidate it into retrievable memories. Our attention is limited by our perspective and interests, and our beliefs and biases can have a strong influence on how we remember events. Our memories are then edited as we store them away, omitting and adding details under the influence of our imagination, assumptions, and the suggestions of others. Retrieving a memory also doesn't preserve its accuracy as we often fill in gaps with invented information and reinterpret the moment in the context of our current circumstances. Each time we remember, we rewrite and save an amended version, and the previous version is lost. This means that our memories are powerful and vivid, but they may not be accurate. Muscle memory and the brain. Muscle memory is a crucial kind of memory that is formed through repeated practice, residing in the motor cortex rather than the hippocampus. In the absence of long-term memory due to the surgical removal of his hippocampus, Henry Mollison demonstrated the development of new physical skills through muscle memory. As the motor cortex forms stable neural pathways with practice, muscle memory does not rely on the hippocampus and enables us to retrieve physical skills without conscious thought. The Power of Forgetting This summary explores how forgetting is essential, necessary, and helpful. It covers the innate ability of working memory to register sensory data, the importance of purposeful forgetting, and how traumatic memories can be rewritten and eventually forgotten. Solomon Shershevsky, a man whose memory never faltered, looked at his ability as a burden, with his mind full of information, much of it useless. The key message here is that forgetting is healthy, necessary, and even helpful. Our working memory registers the sensory data of our present environment and moments, helping us make sense of one instant to the next. Though our working memory is essential, it's temporary. Even when we pay close attention to a moment, 
there's no guarantee that we'll recall it later. However, we can also forget on purpose, which can be healthy and helpful. We can avoid the real-world cues that trigger an upsetting memory and redirect our thoughts elsewhere. Consequently, with time, the neural pathway of that upsetting memory fades. Traumatic memories can also be rewritten through a creative visualization approach. By repeatedly recalling the trauma on purpose but visualizing a better ending each time, the traumatic memories can eventually be overridden. Solomon Shershevsky later found a similar method of forgetting. He drew what he wanted to forget as a meaningless scrawl on a blackboard in his mind's eye and then wiped the board clean. Through this imagined cleansing, he began to forget. The takeaway is that, though frustrating, forgetting is healthy and necessary. It can help us make sense of the present and overcome traumatic experiences. The Flakiness of Prospective Memory The story of Yo-Yo Ma's forgotten cello speaks to the unreliability of our prospective memory, which can result in dire consequences. External memory aids like checklists and physical cues can mitigate this issue. In his book, The Invisible Gorilla, Christopher Chabry recounts a story about world-renowned cellist, Yo-Yo Ma, who forgot his $2.5 million cello in the trunk of a New York City cab. Such a blunder highlights an important aspect of our memory, prospective memory, the memory of an intention, which is inherently unreliable and prone to forgetting. This flakiness of prospective memory can have benign consequences like forgetting to buy milk or pick up dry cleaning. However, it can also lead to disastrous outcomes, such as surgeons forgetting to remove surgical instruments from patients before stitching them up. To minimize such risks, external memory aids like checklists have become standard practice among surgeons and commercial pilots. Writing and reviewing a to-do list regularly can also aid memory. Specifying tasks clearly and setting up reminders on a smartphone or computer can help ensure tasks are not forgotten. Physical cues, such as placing items in visible places, can also be effective. For example, Yo-Yo Ma would not have forgotten his cello if it was blocking the cab's trunk. In conclusion, prospective memory is unreliable, leading to forgotten intentions that may have grave consequences. Using external memory aids and techniques such as writing lists, setting reminders, and using physical cues can mitigate these risks. The surprising truth about memory. Your brain's capacity to learn and recall information is both remarkable and shoddy. The key to better recall lies in making abstract information meaningful and tactile. Akira Haraguchi, a retired engineer, once recited pi to 111,700 digits without any external reminders. However, he is not a memory savant or a mathematical genius. His brain is just like everyone else's. You, too, have achieved a similar feat of memorization, such as understanding, spelling, and pronouncing as many as 100,000 words. But why is it that we can recall some information and forget others, such as forgetting a loved one's birthday? The capacity to learn and recall information is both remarkable and shoddy. One of the most frequent memory failures occurs at the tip of the tongue, which happens due to our difficulty in recalling abstract information such as names. Unlike professions like Baker, family names carry no meaning, story, or sensory data for our brains to hold on to. Haraguchi's memorization of Pi demonstrates that the key to better recall lies in making abstract information meaningful and tactile. By transforming each digit into a syllable and each syllable into a word, Haraguchi was able to create a long, unusual, and memorable story out of Pi. The brain favors the meaningful and tactile, which is why it's easier to remember Baker instead of Baker. In conclusion, the ability to memorize and recall information is a mind-blowing achievement, but it is also not infallible. Understanding how the brain processes information and focusing on making it meaningful and sensory can help improve recall. Memory lapses versus Alzheimer's disease. As we age, memory lapses are common due to natural brain weakening. However, Alzheimer's disease has a distinct source, the buildup of proteins into amyloid plaques. These plaques trigger neural failures that lead to memory lapses of a different character. While aging is inevitable, there are ways to optimize memory. 
Healthy Habits Against Alzheimer's The importance of forming healthy habits and the impact they have on staving off Alzheimer's disease is well documented in a two-decade-long study of 678 Catholic nuns conducted by a group of Alzheimer's researchers. These habits include embracing mentally and socially challenging activities, getting enough sleep, managing chronic stress, and cultivating a routine of mindfulness, gratitude, and compassion. Resilient brains fortified by years of formal education, meaningful occupations, and mentally stimulating hobbies are associated with creating new neural connections to resist the onset of dementia. Through following this example and taking care to form healthy habits, we may mitigate the risk factors of Alzheimer's and help preserve memory function. Optimize your memory. Learn useful techniques to improve your memory and recall information with greater efficiency. Have you ever struggled to remember a phone number or an important date? You're not alone. The brain has a loose grip on abstractions like numbers. However, it has a far tighter hold on images and stories. The good news is that you can use this preference for visuals and narratives to optimize your memory. Science journalist Joshua Ford used mnemonic techniques to compete in the USA Memory Championship and won. His approach shows that paying attention, making things visual, creating meaningful stories, and repeating information all work to help you remember better. To help swing the doors of the working memory wide open, clear away distractions and focus on the emotional, sensory, and factual information. When taking notes, add doodles and highlights. When remembering names, create an image that links the name to an object or person. Make information meaningful and personal by creating a story. Better yet, make it about you. This taps into the brain's love of narrative and the human tendency for self-involvement. Repetition is also key to recall. Quiz yourself and repeat the information until it sticks. Don't forget to leverage technology and external aids. Use your phone's reminders, make lists, or put physical cues in place to remind you of important information. Your brain needs all the help it can get, so why not take advantage of these tools to optimize your memory? Having traversed the intricate world of memory and forgetting in Lisa Genova's book, you now have a deeper understanding of the science behind our ability to remember and the ways in which our memories can deceive us. Discover how engaging in a healthy, active lifestyle can help mitigate age-related memory loss and even Alzheimer's disease. The book also teaches you how to harness the power of mnemonic techniques, repetition, visualization, narratives, and external aids to optimize your memory. Embrace these lessons to enhance your cognitive abilities and make the most of your memories, while also embracing the silver lining in the art of forgetting.